Well, certainly one definition, Joe, of uh, winning for Ukraine is retaining and regaining the territory they lost back in 2014 mm -hmm. and holding on to their land. They have no interest in letting it go, not one inch. And then the question is, because there was the criticism that NATO as a whole hasn't really stepped in in any way or, you know, Different countries have done different things. Is there more that can be done? And is there more that is owed to Ukraine, which you could argue is paying the price for the safety of the world? Right. And in general, there is a differentiation, it seems, from the Ukrainians between NATO member states and what NATO as an organization has done. I, I've heard a lot of criticism. I'm sure you have, too, by people close to the sure. Ukrainians saying, OK, great. The member states are doing extraordinarily well. But where is NATO, the organization? What, what's your response to that? Well, the response would be that NATO is doing what NATO is chartered to do, which is defending NATO countries. Uh, what NATO has done very impressively and effectively is move additional forces into the three Baltic states, uh, into eastern Poland, and into the eastern parts of the other countries that have borders with Ukraine. Uh, and they've done that very impressively. Uh, but their remit, if you will, their mission is not to defend uh, Ukraine. That's a bilateral mission between the different countries that have been undertaking the effort to support Ukraine. And in that regard, I think NATO as a whole resolved to do this, and then individual countries are the ones that carry that out. NATO is not set up to be uh, a security assistance provider necessarily to a country that is outside uh, of the alliance. Um, you can ask whether or not there should, as a result of this, be some kind of guarantee at the end of all this. Uh, Ukraine will certainly try to be a member of the EU, and, and I'd hope that that would be possible. And there's going to need to be some kind of security guarantee short of actually being a member of NATO, so that Article 5, an attack on one, is an attack on all may not be mm -hmm. in effect for NATO, but there's going to have to be some workaround in that regard. I don't see uh, Ukraine being able to just go back to the status quo that existed prior to 24 February without greater assurance. And indeed, you know, again, Mika, I think you touch on something very important, which is just, I, I think Ukraine, in a sense, has won just by preventing Russia from achieving its main objective, which was to topple the government control Kiev and re replace President Zelensky uh, with a pro-Russian figure. Uh, all of these grand uh, designs that Putin had for Ukraine obviously have not come to pass. Nonetheless, the damage has been enormous, and the amount of Ukraine that has been taken away from their control is significant. Uh, and again, they are going to try everything they can to get that back, and we ought to do everything we can to help them get that back without, in a sense, directly confronting Russia, which I think has been the correct direction. Uh, that this mm -hmm. administration has taken. You know, no one was more critical of this administration on Afghanistan than I was. But in this case, mm -hmm. I think they've done an impressive job. So, so G General, wh what are your thoughts on the United States making a mistake, uh, possibly letting Ukraine into NATO? I know Dr. Brzezinski, starting in 2008, said it should be their decision. Others have said the same, but most policymakers thought it would be too provocative. Antagonistic. Too antagonistic. What are your thoughts on that? Did we make a mistake as a country not accepting them into NATO earlier? Well, the problem is, of course, that we're making this assessment with what we know now. Um, and right. that's very different from what we knew then and what we assumed then. Let's face it, we assumed that the Russian military was vastly more capable than it was. We were taken in by Putin's information uh, offensive, if you will, about how much he had done to modernize this great Russian military. We bought into this idea of the Gerasimov doctrine, named for the chief of the general staff, hybrid warfare they were supposedly masters of. And yet it's turned out that they've been uh, inept in virtually every single category by which, again, you could evaluate a military force. Um, but at the time, uh, again, I think a degree of caution uh, was in order. Um, we had to be very careful, we thought, not to provoke uh, Russia. Uh, and as we have reassessed, of course, even at the beginning of this war, there was hesitation even to arm uh, Ukraine, to provide certain weapons for fear that they would fall into the hands uh, of the Russians very quickly and so forth. So we've continually reassessed this. Uh, but I think that, the, it, again, that thinking at the time uh, probably was correct. Uh, 
Uh, it's impossible knowing what we know now to objectively look back. Um, but it's really now about going forward. And I think the key issue here is that regardless of Ukraine's accession to the EU, there is going to be a need for some kind of security guarantee that has to be crafted. Uh, and of course, I think we are going to be less worried about what Russia might do, noting that they still do have the largest uh, nuclear arsenal in the world. But of course, there's much less concern uh, about them now. Now, that also, we have to be a little careful not to be short-sighted uh, and remember about the end of World War I and the conditions and, and so forth. So, uh, but, but again, we have a new context. And that context, I think, uh, in that, we have done very impressively and we need to keep doing that. And that $40 billion that will be signed uh, into law by President Biden, presumably on this trip, uh, is going to provide of enormous assistance uh, to the Ukrainians, by the way, also to our own forces, uh, because mm -hmm. we have to re replace all of these, these various items that we have drawn these out of our own stocks. These haven't come from an assembly line to Ukraine. They're coming from our units to Ukrainian forces.